Stan Lee as Victoria Carano of the Curry College class in 2025 performs our national anthem. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Victoria Torado, Curry College class of 2025. Please be seated. Good morning again, and welcome to one of the great events in the annual life of the college, the launch of a new academic year. In my view, there are two purposes to our academic convocation, both significant, both important. First, we welcome the students who are the members of the Curry College class of 2026 into our academic community. Welcome. Second, convocation is also a moment to welcome back the, the other members of our community and collectively we symbolically launched the new academic year together with all of the expectations, challenges, and promise associated with the new year. I want to share with you that for you, for our academic year, and for our people, I'm optimistic for our success. I'm optimistic primarily for one reason, the people in this room, the students, the faculty, the staff, the alums, and the friends of our college that make this institution the vibrant and important academic and social community that it is. To our faculty and staff, thank you. Thank you for your belief in education and its power to transform people's lives for the better. Thank you for your commitment to Curry. Importantly, perhaps most importantly, Thank you for your commitment to our students and their success. Now, to the members of the Curry College class of 2026. On behalf of all of us present, the Curry College faculty and staff, your returning fellow students, the alumni population here, and on behalf of the entire Curry College community, it is truly a pleasure for me to welcome you the members of the class of 2026 to our annual new student convocation. We have great expectations for you. Expectations for your success and expectations for your service and your contributions to our college community, both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. To those of you joining our community today I'd like to also take a few minutes to speak to you about the culture and expectations of Curry College. Curry is an institution grounded in respect, a profound and deep respect for each individual, for the person they are, for the potential they have, and for the contributions they will make. As an institution of higher education, 
we are committed to open inquiry and to respectful dialogue, all with our insistence that dialogue be civil. This is a good place, a place where people care about each other and treat each other with dignity and respect. We welcome all people at Curry College. That's a baseline consideration of our community that we insist on. We don't discriminate on who people are or who we think they are. As you begin your Curry journey, I also ask you to consider your personal responsibility and that of the personal responsibility of your friends. Get involved with your friends in making this their Curry way as well. If you see something bad or potentially developing, get involved. It achieves the community we want, and it makes Curry so much better for all of us. In conclusion, the words you're looking for, I can't tell you how excited I am that you're here. You're great people. You're going to do great things at a great college. You would not be here if we did not unequivocally believe that. You'll learn, you'll grow, you'll succeed, and you'll have fun. I look forward to having the opportunity to meet you all over the coming years. In the meantime, on behalf of myself and the entire administration of the college, please accept my best wishes for a terrific year starting right now. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Ed Cabellan, Vice President of Enrollment Management, who will present the class of 2016. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, President Quigley. Good morning, members of the platform party, our faculty, our staff, and most importantly, the class of 2026. My name is Ed Cabellan, and I just want to share a little bit about myself. I'm starting my third week, uh, sorry, third week, third year working here at Curry. It's been a busy weekend, folks, as all of you know. And I was born in Providence, Rhode Island, the firstborn son of immigrant parents from the Philippines. And I'm the first in my family to attend college here in the United States, where I've earned my bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. My family and I have lived in Brockton the past 18 years, where my wife teaches second grade in the Brockton public school system. And both my daughters attend Brockton High School. One's a junior and one's a freshman. I'm starting my 26th fall working in higher education, and I'm very excited to welcome all of you to our great community. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend I know it's been busy, and have spent time getting to know one another and making new friends. This morning, I have the honor of presenting some fun facts about your class, the class of 2026. First, the class of 2026 has 525 members from 25 US states, mostly from the Northeast, New England, New York, New Jersey, but also commonly from Florida, California, Texas, and Maryland. The closest student lives 4.5 miles away in Milton, here Milton, and the farthest student lives 8,541 miles away from Vietnam. What other countries are represented in the class of 2026? Trinidad and Tobago, Canada, Antigua, Ethiopia, Mexico, Rwanda, Turkey, and Taiwan. No matter where you come to us from, we're pleased to welcome you here at your new home at Curry College. Next, 34% of the class of 2026 are from diverse backgrounds. 17% 17 of you identify as black or African American. 12% of you identify as Hispanic. In addition, 38% of the class of 2026 identifies themselves as first generation. They're first in their families to go to college. Please know that our diversity center, located right here in the STU, is a great place to meet other diverse students, faculty and staff, and get support whenever you need it. Also, based on what you share with our admission team, there are a wide range of interests amongst your peers, including community service, writing, art, dance, video games, hiking, skiing and snowboarding, just to name a few. 
we invite you to stop by our student activities office anytime here in the STU and specifically on September 7th when our student activities fair kicks off to get involved right away and continue making those friends you started this weekend. We want you to stay active in student organizations, activities, and club sports to continue meeting and growing your Curry crew. In addition, 32% of you are playing a varsity sport here at, at the college. And we encourage everyone to support our scholar athletes on the field, on the pitch, on the court, or on the ice by attending their games and, and cheering our athletes on to victory. Finally, no matter where you are from and how, or how you identify or what you're interested in, the college is here to support you every step of the way, academically, through our, through our dedicated faculty, advising, tutoring, engagement through student organizations, activities, events, club sports, wellness through mental health support, recreation, spiritual support, and financial through financial literacy education and our robust financial aid office. Ask Alex, our chatbot, anytime via text message if you have any questions. On behalf of the entire college community, welcome to Curry College and our best wishes for a successful journey. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cabellan. It's now my pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Yvonne Welsh from the Curry College class of 2024. Yvonne is a sociology major with a minor in law and society. She serves as a lead resident assistant, a student building manager, a Curry partner mentor, and a student worker in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Yvonne also works with nonprofits in Lowell, Mass., such as DIY Lowell and the Boys and Girls Club. Yvonne's plans after Curry are to obtain a master's degree in higher ed or student affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Yvonne Welsh. Hello and good morning, class of 2026. <laughs> Welcome to Curry College. My name is Yvonne Welsh. I am a junior sociology major with a minor in law and society from Lowell, Massachusetts. This school year, I will be serving as lead resident assistant, a student building manager, Curry partner, a student worker in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, and a representative for the Student Government Association. My best advice is to be proactive. That's going to look different for each one of you. I have a few pieces of advice that I believe will help you find your most driven self. Get involved. Make it a mission to branch out of your comfort zone. By getting involved now, you'll be building your networking foundation for life. Challenge yourself to be a student that is eager to learn. Apply for an on-campus job. Having an on-campus job is a real hands-on learning experience. Getting active learning experience sets you apart. You have an opportunity to integrate the material from your classes into your everyday life. As a sociology major, you look to understand the world through the lens of different groups and institutions. In the workplace, applying the knowledge I have gained has benefited me in real life situations. In this gym, while working as student building manager, I have made some of my best memories. The covers that are currently on the floor are called tarps. They're awful to put down, but having the rest of the coworkers there to help you is the best feeling ever. My first semester working in the student center, I had the privilege of working with Nick, DJ, and James. They were the most supportive role models I could have to look up to. Without noticing, they taught me about being a better resourceful leader, all while tossing around a roll of tape. Every person you meet has something to offer you. Naturally, you won't be friends with everyone you meet, but learning about that is important too. You should find your people, but that doesn't mean you stop there. The more you network within your peers, the larger the support group you have. Getting to know the people in your community expands their academic line of motivation. Getting to know the people around you makes you a stronger student and individual. Do not feel pressured to make decisions. 
You have the next couple of years to discover yourself through opportunities. Be open. Try things you think you're bad at. I'm a junior, and this semester I'm auditioning for the dance team for the first time. Even though it's a kind of a time, a random time to try a new sport, I'm still gonna go out there and see what happens, even though I haven't had as much experience as the rest of the team. When you enter new situations with a positive mindset, you can achieve a lot. Push yourself out there and defy other people's expectations for you. You will surprise yourself when you see what you can accomplish. Stay on campus. Whether it's homesickness or significant other at home, by increasing the time you spend at Curry, you will feel right at home. All of high school, I couldn't wait to leave home and move on to campus. That didn't change the fact I went home every weekend first semester. It's a transition that needs time to get into the groove of, even if you were a student that couldn't wait to leave. Slowly, I started staying on campus longer and filling the extra time with clubs and events on campus. It's one thing to be on campus and be present, but it's a completely different environment when you're on campus and involved. Don't cut corners, again, don't cut any corners. College is about learning. Give your undivided attention to your professors during class time. Pay attention to lectures, PowerPoints, and your peers. Classes are more enjoyable and you retain knowledge through active participation. If a class isn't your vibe, connect it to your interests. If you're taking reading, writing, and research, connect your prompt to the causes that are cutting edge in your major. Even take it a step up and challenge yourself to learn about topics that you can't wrap your head around. Thoroughly pay attention to detail so you don't sell yourself short of so many valuable lessons. Four days ago, during first year move-in, I had a conversation with Victoria Thomas, a fellow RA, and we concluded that for both of us, college feels weird. It feels unreal and confusing for the first few weeks, but then one day, it really just clicks. You don't realize it, but you have it under control. Right now, it feels like an impossible task, but I assure you that the butterflies will slow down and you will find your path here at Curry. Curry chose you for a reason and I'm overjoyed to have you all here as classmates. Ladies and gentlemen, Yvonne Welsh. Thank you, Yvonne, for your terrific advice and remarks. It's now my pleasure and privilege to introduce our faculty speaker, Dr. Jennifer Balboni, professor in our Sociology and Criminal Justice program, who will speak on behalf of the faculty of Curry College. Please welcome Dr. Balboni. Thank you, President Quigley, Provost Shea, members of our administration, Mr. Aronson, Ms. Welsh, um, good morning to the faculty and staff here today, but most importantly, good morning to you, class of 2026. My name is Jennifer Balboni, and I've been uh, here at Curry for 14 years. I'm a professor of criminal justice. I am also a mom of two boys, one in college and one about to be going to college next year. So at this point in my life, I am happily uh, surrounded by college students, both at home and at work. Uh, but it isn't every day that I get this big a captive audience. So as my son, my older son said to me when I told him I was doing this convocation address, you better bring it, mom. So at this point, I imagine you've gotten a lot of advice. Um, people have told you to, um, high school teachers, parents, guardians, orientation leaders today, even today, people have told you that College is a time to redefine yourself, to challenge yourself, to branch out. These are facts, all true. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit more general advice about college. Make a connection with your professors. Go to office hours, they're actually there for you. Um, be curious, consider taking a semester abroad, join an intramural. Um, this is all good advice, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today. Um, I wanna add one more thing in the mix today, and it's gonna be your first college vocabulary word. Are you ready? Okay, good. Here's your word. Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U, -U -U. Ubuntu. It's an African philosophy meaning the following. 
we are all interconnected. My humanity is your humanity, and your humanity is my humanity. Archbishop Desmond Tutu talked about Ubuntu extensively throughout his life, and he used it as a way to both fight apartheid in his country of South Africa and to heal that nation. So at this point, you're probably wondering, what does that have to do with you today on your first day of college? Um, that's a fair question. Um, and I'll tell you, today is the first day of your college journey, yes. But Ubuntu points out that it isn't just about you. You're creating a new path for yourself, but and you're taking that first step, but you are also part of a community. So look around. No, I mean really, look around. Look to your left and look to your right. Say, fist bump somebody, say hello to one another. Actually look at each other, yes. <laughs> we are all interconnected. And now, as of today, we are uniquely interconnected because we're part of the same community. Keep in mind that we can lift each other up and we can bring each other down. This works both ways. Archbishop Tutu once said that when you do good, it spreads out for the whole of humanity, the entirety of humanity. He was right. So is the opposite of that. In my work, I sometimes have the privilege of sitting in and facilitating restorative justice circles. And for those of you, anybody familiar, everybody ever, any, heard that term, restorative justice? Okay, I, I see a few hands, that's encouraging. For those of you who don't know what it is, um, that is when a person who has committed a crime, created some harm in a community, sits in a circle with people who are most impacted by those crimes. And in that space, they decide on what the restoration is going to be. And every one of those circles looks different. Re restorative justice is built on this idea of Ubuntu, of us all being interconnected. Here's what I've learned from sitting in those circles that I think is relevant to you. When we listen to one another, and I mean really listen intently, because in those circles you need to listen intently, there is power in that. When we lean in, we usually learn something. And sometimes that learning transforms us. It gives us wisdom. And in a moment, you're going to take the oath for Curry College, right, that talks about seeking to gain and apply knowledge in pursuit of truth and wisdom. So in the spirit of Ubuntu, as you start your college journey today, I'm going to ask you to first listen to one another. And not just to people who look like you or who have similar backgrounds to you. Listen especially to people who don't look like you and don't have similar backgrounds. That can be where the learning happens. If you only listen to people who are similar to you, you're doing college wrong. <laughs> and I know that we live in a society right now that encourages you not to listen to other people. But I'm asking you to do the opposite. Listen. And I think if you do, you will find that you have more in common than you thought you did. This brings me to my next point. We're all uniquely connected because we're living through these historic times. In your sophomore year, you probably started out having kind of a normal year. And then in March of 2020, we all, the world changed. We learned uniquely that this globe is interconnected in ways that maybe none of us anticipated. Many of us lost people we loved, Others have suffered under this virus in many ways. But one thing became glaringly clear to me during this time, and that's that we need to support one another. That's the way through. So the next thing I'm going to do is to ask you to challenge one another. I am not suggesting to you quiet submission. Let me be clear, I'm not definitely not saying that to you. College is a time for you to figure out what you stand for. So listen, yes, support one another, definitely. But I think part of Ubuntu is that we have a responsibility to challenge one another. You are not a passive bystander in your life. You are not a passive bystander in this community. We can strengthen one another. We can make ourselves better and stronger in a way that makes this community better and stronger. 
And whether that means on the football field or the baseball field or as part of student government or the Black Student Union or the Curry Pride Coalition or the Criminal Justice Club, I see you future CJSO students. Let us strengthen one another because we collectively create this community. The faculty and staff, we are all here for you. This is your academic home now. So let's listen to one another. Let's support one another. Let's challenge one another. And let's do good so that it spreads out for the whole of humanity. Thank you. That was terrific. Thank you, Dr. Jennifer Balboni. It's now my distinct privilege and pleasure to introduce you to our convocation speaker, a Curry College alum, Mr. Robert Arneson. Can we put this in uh, this thing? All right, I'll go this way. Good morning, everybody. Great to see everyone, bright, shiny faces. This is excellent. Actually, I don't think I need to give this talk today because everyone behind me did an excellent job describing my whole speech, so we can move on. No, I'm just kidding. Good morning and welcome to Curry College, class of 2026. That is amazing to me. Before we get started, I'd like to personally just welcome you to Curry. I want to thank President Quigley, the staff, the faculty, and all the great people that set this meeting up to have me speak to you this morning. It's a true honor. I look around at all of you, and I think this is your student body. These are the people you're going to be going to class with for the next four years. People you're going to make great relationships with, friendships. Not just this class, but all the classes here today. All your hard work and effort is paid off because you're sitting here today in, this, in these seats ready to embark on your new journey. So it's a very exciting time. So for that reason, I'd like everybody to stand up, including the faculty, the folks behind me. I'd like to give yourself a huge round of applause for getting into Curry College and starting your journey today. Oh, can you hear me? For all the students, please remain standing. You're not off the hook quite yet. For the rest of us, we can sit down. I'd like for each of you to turn to the person next to you, shake that person's hand, and introduce yourself and say congratulations for getting into Curry College. <laughs> Excellent, thank you everybody. Okay, you can sit down now. I'm not gonna torch you for the rest of this talk. Thank you for pleasing me for that exercise. I sat in the same seats you were sitting in many years ago. I remember the feeling of being excited, anxious, nervous, wondering personally would I ever meet new friends. I was the king of the hill in high school and coming into college I knew nobody. So it was scary. Um, the biggest question I think on my mind as I reflect back is could I succeed in the next four years and then beyond that? And that was a scary moment too because after the four years technically I had to get a job and really start contributing to the society and to earn a paycheck, et cetera. But the one thing that I made a commitment to myself coming into college, I would go outside my comfort zone and try new things. And I'm here to tell you today, my theme for all of you in this talk is take a chance and do something different. Don't follow the ways of the past. This is a new start for everybody as you embark on this journey. See how it feels to take a chance. See what happens when you do something different. See what you learn about yourself. If there's anything I want you to remember today from this talk, is take a chance and do something different. So let me get a little bit into myself, very briefly. I was the first generation in my family to go to college. My parents worked extremely hard to give me an opportunity to get a higher education. When I first came into Curry College, my original goal was to be on the radio. I wanted to learn business management and communications. I quickly realized being part of the WMLM network, that I did not have the radio voice to make it in that field. And so, um, with the help of some people behind me, we did a little career change. But what I did realize 
at that time is I wanted to make my parents proud. I wanted to take advantage of the opportunities that college gave me and give it everything that I had. I was also very nervous as well because I had some learning challenges coming into college. I learned very late in high school that certain things came very hard to me, reading comprehension, taking tests, and learning how to study appropriately. So I took a chance and I got some help from the Curry Resources and the staff, professors, my advisor, and the PAL program, and I reached outside my comfort zone again at the start of college, and I found the help that I needed. So I took a chance and I did something completely different. I opened myself up to how the Curry College experience could really help me, and they did. And I learned how to do things better. I learned how to take tests. I learned how to read more effectively. And it's really been a huge part of my life to this day. So let's talk about change for a second. The world has changed tremendously. I look out there and I smile. I have three boys of my own, two graduated from college, one going in in a couple years. So I've lived quite an exciting time with them. But back in 1989, which was 33 years ago, I sat, as I mentioned, in those seats. And when I think about the changes, I think about we didn't have the internet. There was no such thing. There was no such thing as social media, Snapchat, Instagram. In fact, I still don't know how to use those things today. Um, my kids constantly tell me I need to get on Snapchat. I don't even know how to do it. Personal computing was not even available at that point in time. In fact, when we came to school, our, my parents had to purchase a word processor. And for some of you professors out there, we had very messy handwriting back then, so they wanted us to use word processors to type our papers in so they could read what we put together on paper. There were no cell phones. In fact, we had pay phones. I don't know if any of you remember those, but we had those all over the campus, on the dorm floors, in the library, around the student center, the gym. And in fact, when my parents dropped me off in college, they gave me three rolls of quarters to make phone calls and to do my laundry. So times have changed. We also had something called the library. I think there's still a library here. Is that, is that true? OK, good. Please, please go there. But we had encyclopedias and dictionaries. And this is how we found the information we needed to, to take our tests, to do our studying, and to write our papers. Most importantly, we had to work together to find the answers we needed. We asked questions, and we challenged each other back then. We had no Google in our pockets. So what does this all mean for you? As I was preparing for this day, I wanted to touch on COVID as well, as Dr. Balboni just spoke about this. COVID has changed the lives of everybody in this room, in our community, and in the world. It's changed my business, which I'll talk to you about in a second. But most importantly, no matter what you had to do to survive the COVID pandemic, it brought you here today. You survived. You got through this time. You learned new ways of learning new ways of communicating. You embraced change and you came here today and you got here, you adapted. So hats off to each and every one of you. Don't take that for granted. That is a very serious thing and you adapted. So now you're here. When I think about it, I think you guys came into school on Thursday if I'm not mistaken. So think about this. You came into school, you got thrown into a dorm room, you have a new roommate, you have to share a bathroom, which can be, can be wild. It's very noisy. Um, there's people around you at all times. You must go to the dining hall to eat now. You have to do your own laundry eventually. You're probably not there yet, maybe in a few days. Um, and at the same time, you have to manage your own time, which is kind of a cool concept. Because mom and dad or your parents or loved ones don't have to remind you how to do anything. So that comes with a huge challenge. But at the end of the day, think about how you got here. You survived. And it springboarded you into this situation today to adapt. So hats off to each of you. So how do we make the most of the Curry experience? I thought about this quite a bit preparing for today. So my personal advice to each of you as a former student, as a father, as a co-founder of a technology company, take advantage of the Curry experience. Develop strong bonds with your classmates, professors, staff. It's so vital. I did that, and I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today if I didn't. Challenge your minds is really important. As an employer, which I'll talk to in a second, we want people to challenge us, to think of new innovative ways to do business and to do anything. Be a part of the Curry fabric, get involved, whether it's sports. I see the football team, I think some of you guys right here, right? Get involved. Whether it's 
sports, whether it's intramurals, whether it's the radio, social clubs, events, things, get involved in this fabric. There's so many great things to do at this college. Once you determine your major, when that time comes, no matter what field you're studying, figure out how to get involved with, through internships, through helping out, getting involved in the community. That experience is priceless. Because when I'm talking to people, it's really important that they talk about their experience. And so by doing that, take advantage of the programs here to help you. Lastly, and this is my personal favorite, learning is infinite. There are no boundaries to learning. Challenge your minds. Take a chance and do something different. Get out of your comfort zone starting today. So let's go to today. In today's world, think about employers, companies like mine. Why do we hire? So we hire kids out of school. We hire graduates. And there's a reason for that. But in my company, at eClinical Solutions, we're in the life sciences business. So that means we help pharmaceutical, biotech, and med device companies get the answers to their clinical programs to get new drugs, applications, molecules, and devices onto the market faster, more timely. So we sell software and services to connect all the clinical data in real time so people can get the answers they need. So, okay, what does that all mean at the end of the day? It means we have to hire people to think of new ways to solve huge data challenges that we face in our business today. So as innovators, we take chances all the time which means we do our homework. We understand the risks. We're thoughtful about how we approach business, but we need smart people like you in four years to come help us on this journey. So I've learned as being a co-founder of a company and in my life building relationships, trying my best, and trying to expand my mind, and creating good, solid values will help me along the way, and that's what we do here. We put our people first in everything that we do, and this means we put our team in front of the business needs. So be prepared because hopefully in 2026, I'll be talking to some of you. And when that time comes, I'm going to look for people that embrace change, people that take risks, being open-minded to new ideas. Someone touched on that earlier today. You're going to talk to people outside your comfort zone. Again, take a chance. Meet folks. Have, be open-minded to ways of doing new business. My business partner is from India, and one of our chief technology officers is from Egypt. I would have never dreamed in a million years being at Curry College in Milton, Massachusetts, that two of the, my confidants and helping me grow my business and my learnings would be from out of the country. So you never know what's gonna happen. Be organized and well-spoken. And one thing that's really important is be open to feedback. It's hard to get feedback sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's really important to understand how you're being perceived, how people are, you're communicating with people, and be open to that feedback. And lastly, be bold. Be an advocate for yourself. Take advantage of opportunities no matter what you're studying, no matter what you're doing to advance yourself. I can't stress that enough. Take a chance and do something different. Learn, challenge yourself. This is your pathway to true growth. So in conclusion, I had to work much harder when I entered college. I still do to this day, actually. I had to work really hard to get good grades to succeed and be the best I could be. The Curry College experience and the team that helped me every step of the way gave me the confidence that I needed to be standing in front of you here. I personally want to thank President Quigley because when I was in school, he was actually my business law teacher. He taught a number of business management courses, and he was my personal advisor. So to be standing here with him today is a huge honor for me personally. Without the wisdom advice of President Quigley, again, I don't mean to reiterate this, I would not be standing up here today. He had frank conversations with me, helped me grow, and helped me achieve my goals. And to this day, we've been in touch. So I can tell you from experience that get connected to the people at this school. They will go above and beyond to help you. You just have to take that next step, step to get involved. The world needs creative minds, people that are determined and can solve big challenges. And yes, people have to work hard. I expect it, I demand it at people in my company, and at the same time, you should be challenging yourselves to do the same thing. Because if you do, the world is yours to explore. So thank you again. I appreciate being part of the convocation. I wish you all well in your own journeys. Make the most of it, set the bar high for yourself, and I hope to be speaking to some of you in 2026. All the very best.
Bob Arneson, Curry College class of 1993. 33 years ago today, Bob was sitting where you sit. Different building, same role, same situation. Today, he employs over 425 individuals in a company he co-founded in the medical technology space, and he comes back to support Curry College, comes back to support its students, and comes back to hire our students. I have great expectations for you folks to follow in Bob Artisan's shoe steps. You do well to do so. Now, it's my privilege to introduce our interim provost, Dr. Robert Shea, for the matriculation. Good morning. Greetings and welcome to President Quigley, Dr. Belboni, Mr. Aronson, Ms. Welsh, faculty, staff, student leaders, and most of all, members of the class of 2026. As the provost, it's my pleasure to officially welcome you to our learning community. I thank you for your participation in these convocation exercises and for celebrating this important milestone together. For many of you, I suspect that today is a day of powerful and competing emotions. The energy created by pride, happiness, and excitement about starting your college career is mixed with some conflicting feelings and anxiety about transition to college life, making new friends, taking on new academic challenges, and for some of you, being away, at least temporarily, from loved ones. Joining you today are the dedicated faculty and staff and student leaders who are committed to mentoring you along the way. Don't hesitate to reach out, to ask questions, to seek their guidance, make suggestions. We're all here for you and to support your success. You may be asking yourself at this point, what's so special about this ceremony and how much longer is it gonna go on? I want to shed a little light on the former question, and with regard to the latter, I promise not much longer. History informs us that the term convocation dates back to the 14th century. It was originally used to describe important religious gatherings and then adopted by colleges and universities to celebrate academic ceremonies such as the beginning of the school year. As you have now witnessed, at Curry College, our convocation begins with the procession of the new class, down from upper campus and into this building, cheered by the faculty and staff. That welcome is genuine, and it symbolizes the spirit of community here at Curry, as well as the wealth of people and resources who are here to support your success. And it's that community, these partnerships, that I want to focus on this morning. Your first official cut week of college has begun. First classes are just a few hours away, and the writing of a new and exciting chapter of your life is underway. In the coming days and weeks, you'll begin to gain a deeper sense of self, of why you are here, of the strengths that you bring to this enterprise, and the opportunities for growth that await you. You will also gain a sense of what it means to belong and to contribute to the Curry College community, a community where everyone matters and where members support one another. Learning is central to what we do as a, as a college. And while we learn together, new and returning students, faculty and staff, we are also in the process of building community and caring about one, each, one another. This is hard work that requires patience, humility, and honesty. Being a community member requires intentional investment and action. True community members don't stand by while a peer struggles with any of life's major challenges, or losses, or injustice. They reach out, offering empathy, intervention, and support. The call to community requires all of us to listen and understand each other, to welcome and value all expressions of diversity and identity, and to respect and value the dignity of each individual. You just heard this morning the sage advice offered by one of your peers, Yvonne Welsh. 
And as she so personally described, engagement is the key to your success. Not only in college, but indeed in life. And not just for your own achievement of material success, but as a mechanism by which we imbue our lives with meaning and purpose. This requires each of us to stretch ourselves, to try new things, and to take risks. You will no doubt hear many offer you advice along the lines of college is what you make of it, or you'll get out of college what you put into it. And while undoubtedly true on one level, without further investigation, such advice is a bit flawed. Participation is necessary, but not sufficient for meaning making. Our individual narratives require us continually to take stock of who we are, what our strengths and passions are, and in what ways do we need to grow in order to achieve our dreams. You just heard that kind of reflection offered by one of your peers. Yvonne's words powerfully tell her story, but if you listened closely, her story guides the path to meaning and success that we want you all to travel. As a community, we continuously work to help all of our members thrive, to be their best selves, to support and celebrate their successes, and to achieve their dreams. To be successful in doing so requires that we collectively work to create that sense of belonging for every member of the community. I want to assure you that you'll have many partners here to help you build that sense of belonging. You saw many of them as you entered today. They're here to help you develop your story, your narrative, to help you be successful and to help you thrive. As provost, my primary work is the oversight of academic programs and to support the exceptional work of our faculty. On behalf of those faculty, I further extend a curry welcome to you today. They are here to share their knowledge and their expertise and to partner with you. I urge you to take full advantage of the resources they present. Your success is their success. And they are eager to support your growth and development but you can't be a passive recipient of their efforts. Active engagement, purposeful participation, and ongoing reflection is required. Your Curry education will, will help you hone those skills and habits of mind to be successful in such a rapidly changing world that we live in today. A world that needs your talents and your voice. I urge you to be present, to actively engage, to take risks, and to continually reflect on your growth and development. Through these strategies, your success stories will be written. Once again, I welcome you to our learning community. I look forward to seeing you on campus, to working with you to celebrate your successes, and most of all, I eagerly await your unfolding narratives. Thank you. Will the members of the Curry College's entering class please rise? As the interim provost, I formally accept you as new matriculants and members of the Curry College community. Would James Mastrangelo, Annalise Kenward, Javari Gilzeen, and Sarah Kerr please join me on stage to administer the class oath. As a member of the class, class of 2026, 2026 I, res I respect all members of the Curry College, College community. As, As a member of a community, community of diverse learners and educators, I value intellectual, intellectual racial, and cultural diversity as a key to, to understanding, communication, and, and advancing the common good. I seek to gain and apply knowledge in, in pursuit of truth and wisdom. I understand that college, Curry College is committed to divide effective communicators with reflective and critical thinking skills. Supporting my personal and professional goals, 
I accept the responsibility to actively participate in the intellectual life of Curry College as I take advantage of the opportunities ahead. Thank you. Mr. President, it is my pleasure to present the Curry College Class of 2026. Sit down, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, the Class of 2026. How about a big hand for them? <laughs> Dr. Shea, members of the Curry College community, it is my absolute pleasure to recognize Curry's newest student class, the class of 26. I look forward to your membership in our community. I look forward to your success as students and as alums. Please join us at the conclusion of this ceremony for a reception in West Haver Park. We'll adjourn in the reverse order of the way we entered, the platform party, the faculty, and then students. And folks who do not have a class at 1230, you're welcome to join a master class that will be presented here in the Student Center by our alum, Bob Arneson. Congratulations and a great year to everybody. <laughs>